Not much. Not much. On the road right now, chilling, chilling. Okay. Where you heading to? Where you heading to? Um, right now I'm headed to what is that? Grove Fort, Ohio. Oh, you coming up my way, bro? How how much longer you got to get here? Um, say I'm like a 160 miles away. What about what about two hours? About two hours and some yeah, change. Two, two and a half. Man, yeah. oh man, where where? Well, I'm right here in uh, North Canton, man. So where where about you heading to? Um, you know the the Lowe's DC that's right up and uh. It's like right outside of Columbus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I'm familiar with that. I'm familiar with that. You over, you heading over there to uh, where I used to where I used to pick up for my old company, man. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. That is what's up. Well, I don't think uh, yes, I, I I don't think we're gonna be able to link up in person because I'm I'm all the way up here in uh, North Canton and you'll be down like outside of Columbus. So that's about a good two. About a good two and some change for me, man. But yeah, make sure you get right, down. Right. Make sure you get down there safe, man. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, get into it, man. What's up, guys? Lockout man here with another podcast interview. What is going on? So check this out. Check this out. My G, shout out to uh, Demarcio O'Brien. You guys may know him as Young Grind, Young Grizzy. He always hooked me up with some interesting news videos stuff like that and he sent this to me he sent this post right here from my man mr frank barnes we'll play a little bit of it right quick hold on right quick everybody know on 20 the highway is not that good whatever whatever so um As I'm like crossing over like from Louisiana to Mississippi, I'm in the left lane. There's a car in the right lane going about 35, 40 miles an hour with the hazards on. So I was like, all right. I get it to the left lane. I slowed down. I was going about 70, slowed down about 65. Uh, when you go over the bridge from Louisiana to Mississippi, it's like a decline. So I'm getting to the top of the hill. I start to slow down because you can't see what's over the bridge, you know, until you actually get to the top of it. So. All right. All right. So I'm going to have to let this man know that the music. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the music with, with him, you know, explaining everything. It was <laughs> that that one kind of got me the music that got me. I want you guys to put your hands together for Mr. Frank Barnes in the house. What's going on, bro? What's going on, man? Not much, not much, man. Just out here on the road, living day by day. Day by day, man. I, I see, I, I see this video right here, which which caught my eye, including the music. We'll we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, for everybody, for all my listeners that need to know who you are, man, let them know who you are and where you come from. Uh, my name is Frank Barnes. You know what I'm saying? I'm originally from Augusta, Georgia. I done moved out to Louisiana State there for a little bit. Right now, I reside in Atlanta. You know, uh, I've been there for quite some time. So, yeah, I've been driving trucks since I was 21. Been doing tattoos since I was. I would say about 18. So, you know what I'm saying? That's my side hustle when I come off the road or whatever like that. Um, I got a wife, two kids, you know, so uh, I'm just all trying to make it happen, you know? Just trying to do it for your family. I hear you, man. What is, what was, what was it like? Yeah, I, I, You, you deep rooted in the South, man. I can, I can hear it in your accent. You know what I'm saying? You you come oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you come from the home of Hall Malls, Chitlins, Collard Greens, and all like that, man. Southern <laughs> food, man. We we got that going yeah, on. Food, crayfish type. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Like I said, I hear it in your I hear it in your accent, man. So you deep rooted in the South. How was it? How how was it growing up for you, man? Down down south. Uh. You know, it ain't, it ain't like a side story, you know. Uh, 
mama was number one. You know, she held everything down. Uh, you know, pops was tight in and out. So I knew when I had my kids, I didn't want to be that type of way. You know what I'm saying? So that led me on a certain path. And it was, you know, being in and out of jail, it was, you start to get tired of it as you get older. And it was like, I wanted something better. So me just doing tattoos at the time, it was like, yeah, hey, I was still getting in trouble. I had to find a way out. So it was like, why not hop in the truck? You know, you know, and the guy that trained me, which his name is Delane McCune, uh, he trained me. He taught me a lot. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He really guided me to where I am today with this mindset. So, like, yeah, it's, like, big shout-out to him. Like, even to today, like, he made sure I'm straight, like, I'm on a, I'm on the right path because me coming from the street to a driving truck, I could still have them tendencies sometimes. So, yeah, like, he, he made sure I'm right. But if it wasn't for him, like, to be honest, like, I don't even <laughs> – like, they say, like, I've been told, like, yeah, hey, you ain't going to make it to 21. So, like, what him really got me, I, like, yeah, hey, I don't know really why I would be without that dude, though. How how old are you now, bro? 26. 26. I'll be, uh, 27, August. So, you say you started driving trucks when you was, what, 21? So, you, like, five years deep in the game, five and a half, maybe? Yeah, five, maybe, like, three months tight. Hold on right quick. I got the wrong damn, I got the wrong damn drink. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. We got the right drink right here, man. Shit. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Woo. Hold on right quick. I got to. There we go. Um. All right. All right. So. So coming from coming from the streets, man, what what was life like in the streets, man? I mean, you say you went to jail a few times and all like that. When when did you come to the realizations that you knew that you needed to make a change for you and your family? Oh, uh, really? At that time, uh, I was doing a lot of juvenile time. You know what I'm saying? In and out. You know. <clears throat> It was just, it was, I ain't gonna lie, it was hard, you know. It was to the point where, it was like, even when I was young, it was like, I'm tired of, I'm tired. Like, you in the street, you making fast money. Mm -hmm. But don't nobody want to be shot at. Don't nobody, oh yeah, you can't cross this track. Or you can't be on this side of town. Mm -hmm. You can't do this. And it's like, with the mentality that I had, and a lot of people, that was my pills. It was like, yeah, like, either you die or you're going to gain your respect. And that's the mentality we had. We weren't thinking about tomorrow. So it was, you know, my mama tried to break me from that. You know, she's like, yeah, you're smart, but you hang around the wrong people. My thing was, it was, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about who going to respect me out in the street. And where that next you know dollar coming who from. Got, Right, you know, and really the next dollar wasn't even an issue when you got, you know what I'm saying, what they call it, OGs handing you down work to put money in your pocket. So it was all day long, you, you know, the streets going to recruit young people regardless. But it's like when you start seeing people fall and then they could just turn their head like, hey, on to the next, this soldier up next. It's, you kind of get tired of it. So, yeah, like being in and out of you know, uh, uh, juvenile systems, and next thing you know, you end up prison at 13 years old, mm. and they telling you got a life sentence without a possibility of parole. Mm. They charge you as an adult, and then it's like <laughs> you look at everybody's face, like, yeah, it, yeah, it's time for a change. It's definitely time for a change, right. man. Uh, man, that's the streets, man. When it when it calls a person. And the person comes to that streets, it's kind of hard to let go. But you know there, you know there's no four hundred one k for the streets, man. You know that, right? Right. And there ain't right, no, no right. there ain't no four hundred one k for no streets, man. So salute to you for finding a way out of it, and definitely salute to you 
that you got you got into you know got into something that's much more stable much that that will support you and your family in the in the in the future man so you 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 been rocking now did you get your did you get your license through a school or did you get it through a, a company um i got it through a school i went to rural master in jacksonville florida and uh what i did was my granddad at Joe truck and he would at, at one point he was tired of me getting in trouble i was just lost and he was just like uh he got like one of them old Mack trucks with the the cab over, mm-hmm. like flat in the front. Yeah, so he was like, uh, I remember he had a ten speed. He was like, I'm gonna teach you how to drive this, and I was a young boy at that time. Okay. He's like, Yeah, I'm gonna teach you how to drive it. So like, I was already driving them. I just wasn't really in the mindset of picking up no load. Like, <laughs> I'm not about to drive no fourteen hours to drop no load somewhere. Mm-hmm. But uh, he got even like at that time I was I was married my ex-wife and it's just a struggle like you know oh what if somebody kick the door in what if somebody do this what if somebody do that like you just got shot at like we don't want to lose you and it was my granddad was like you know what i'm sick of it i keep hearing it from everybody like you reckless well he was like uh if you don't go get your permit i'm gonna come to atlanta and i'm gonna do something to you and i know my granddaddy he not about no games he, I ain't scared of nobody, but when it come to pops, it's like, hey, you better do what he say because he, he don't play no games. Yeah, you said granddad, but, you, you said granddad came, was going to come down <laughs> there and snatch you up something serious, huh? Uh, hey, man, granddaddy didn't play no games, man. When I tell you, like, he was real, he was like, uh, real well respected. You know, like, he a lieutenant, he retired from the army, all that kind of stuff, and he was serious. He was like, real serious. So I went. So the, uh, at this time, I'm living in Atlanta. I went to South Carolina Mall. When they got me a book, I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to study it. I studied it. When I took my test, first time passed it. I was like, oh, I still got it in me. You know what I'm saying? A little stuff. So then I called the school. And it was crazy because I was sitting on the couch. And it's like this dude used to come on from Everest. He used to be like, yeah, you sit on the couch right now. You can make a phone call. Like, <laughs> get up. And I was like, and then they say, you know, it's a trucker commercial. And it was like Roadmaster, Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. I was like, "Bet, let me call him." You say that. So I called him up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it was like it was like you chilling, and all of a sudden that 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 uh that late night commercial comes on. Like, here's your opportunity right here. Right. Right. Oh, okay. That was it. Like, it was just like for me at that moment, and it was crazy because it, it had to be like ten thirty at night when I called somebody to answer. And they was like, yeah, yeah, uh, you got your permit? Like, yeah, all right. So we're going to go ahead and get your mega bus ticket down here. You're going to be in school for two weeks, do a road test. We're going to send you out. So, all right, cool. So, you know, uh, uh, I ended up going to Warner after that. Now, and then they fired my trainer. Now, you know War- so, now, now you know Warner owns uh, Roadmasters. So did you, did, right, did right. you, when you went down to Roadmasters, did you... Did you have to sign a contract or was this out of pocket? No, it was, uh, it wasn't even really like a contract type. It was more of like a, an agreement. So it's not like, yeah, you do the school with us, you go to Warner and it's mandatory for you to sit up till you pay it off. It was more like, yeah, you agree to pay this off no matter what. Okay, so, so no like, matter yeah, yeah, yeah. so no matter what trucking school you went to or what what trucking company you went to, you was you you just signed the contract to pay off the debt with with uh with uh Roadmasters. And Warner was right. just happened to be that company that that pretty much offered you your first job. Right. They was really offering everybody, like they was trying to get everybody out of school. It was like recruited the on graduation day. Damn it, man! And I was like, oh, "All right, so I guess I'm gonna go with them there." Like, see, that's how that's that's how I was like with me because I I went to um I paid for mine out of pocket and I went through uh Tri C uh Technical College and right. 
before we even graduated, there was like a gang of recruiters that was coming to the school. I mean, we had uh, YRC, we had CR England, we had uh, uh, <clears throat> we had a couple of flatbedders, uh, flatbed companies. And then on the last day, that's when U.S. Express came, and I guess uh, the lady was just was just talking good game. I mean, you know, she was just talking that good game and just and just wheeled me in, and I just and I just got on with uh, U.S. Express. Now, if I would have knew what I know now, then yeah, U.S. Express wouldn't have been my first choice. All right, so you right, uh right. you rocking out with Warner. What's your experience uh with Warner and how long you lasted with him? Uh Warner only lasts about two weeks. Oh. Only lasts about two weeks. Whoa. Uh, whoa, whoa, bro. Two yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> it was one of them situations where it was I sat in a hotel for two weeks waiting on a trainer. I got a trainer. Okay. And that trainer really didn't fit my lifestyle. He was the type, you know. I don't call people dirty, but it just wasn't my the way. I I don't like my environment certain type of ways, like, you know. Right. So, um, they ended up giving me somebody else. The dude didn't want me to drive, which I didn't understand. I wasn't really comfortable with that because, like, yeah, like, I got to learn. And then I was like, yeah, take me back to Lithia Springs to the terminal. And he was like, uh, matter of fact, I'm gonna start letting you drive since since like you so confident. So, yeah, we started teaming up, whatever like that. And then he ended up one night doing something crazy. I didn't really too much know no better at that time. Mm -hmm. But he did something crazy. So the game supposed to fall on the shoulder, like in certain areas. And he got sidetated. And uh, they ended up calling back to Warner. They fired him. I sat around for like another two weeks waiting on the trainer. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to Swift. Wow. So I jumped to Swift. And that's when my guy, uh, Delaney McCune, like, we was everywhere. All over, like it was crazy because it was like home every weekend. It was like uh Easter coming up, different kind of uh, holidays coming up. We was like home every weekend, but we was all over the place. Like dude, really, he taught me discipline. He's still teaching me discipline. Like you know, what I'm saying how to control myself, how to be safe. Like cause sometimes, even though I be thinking like, yeah, I'm cool, ain't nobody around me. You know, I'm on the road by myself. You can't get too comfortable because anything will pop out. You know what I'm saying? Right. You got to always be diligent. You got to always be focused. You know, you can't can't be caught slipping. I mean, you slip sometimes, but at least you can catch yourself, man. Back at Warner, man, you – so you – this sounds like more than two weeks, bro. So we we looking like two, two weeks, two weeks. We looking at about a total of six weeks, and you was only out for two, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what basically like what I was trying to see. Like, it was on like me driving for them for two weeks. Other than that, they had me like in a budget in motel up the street from them, and I'm like, no, was they, I don't even rock like that. That didn't. Was they pay, was they paying you, or you was or you was just in a holding pattern? No, I was just in a holding pattern. Like, I was straight because I had money from you know what I'm saying past time, but. I, I wasn't used to, you know, sitting around doing nothing. And then I just felt like they was playing with me. It, I wasn't uh, – I wanted to really get on the road at that point. It's Like, it was time for me to transition. It's kind of funny that uh, that a lot of these um, major carriers be, be bringing in a gang of people at a time. I mean, they have orientation mm -hmm. just about every freaking week. They bring in oh, yeah, they yeah. bring in a lot of people, but they don't have enough trainers to train them, which leaves you right. which leaves you out in the dust until you in, until they get you at least a trainer. Now that first trainer may not be the one for you, and then you got to wait for another one, and then let's say that other one that you waited for wasn't like wasn't like to your liking either and then you had to end up waiting on another one me when i got with us express that's what happened to me i got we we came in at the end just about the end of the year so we went home for the holidays i did not get on mm -hmm. with my trainer's truck until maybe the end 
maybe the end of January, the beginning of February. And I'm over here thinking to myself, like, dude, man, come on now. I'm calling up my I'm I'm calling up the chick every week, like, yo, you got somebody yet? You got somebody yet? You got somebody yet? And the only thing she could tell me is, oh, well, don't worry about it, but you getting paid, you getting paid $80 a day, yada, yada, yada. But I can't. I won't be able to get that check until I actually get on the man's truck. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. So all that money is accumulated, which I did get once I got on his truck, but I didn't get it when I wasn't on his truck when I needed it. You see what I'm saying? Right. So right. They, these companies don't have enough trainers but they bringing in a gang of people. How how many people they brought in with you when when you came when you, when you came to Warner? Oh, I can't even remember. It was so many of us. Oh, it was that many. You can't even. You lost count. It was that many. <laughs> yeah, it was. A, it was. A, you lost. It was count. a big place. Cause, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, you lost count with that. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, <laughs> So you went over to Swift. Now, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people say, you know, say what you say about Swift. There is some, some good trainers over there and there are some good drivers over there. So how, how long, right. how long, and what was your experience with Swift? Um, started out with Swift. I had a dope trainer. Like I said, his name was Elaine McCune. I call him the Mac man. Like anybody he trained, like yeah, you gonna you gonna come out right. Um, my training was a one. I ended up getting on with a Walmart account out of Monroe, Georgia, and yeah, I rolled it. Like really, that account showed me, you know, what I'm saying how to back up and all of that. Which I know, like Swift got like a bad reputation and all of it, but every driver they just kick Swift. You know, I, I really don't understand it. It's like they point Swift out, they're a target, and everybody just records when Swift messed up. Mm -hmm. But they don't record when everybody else messed up. Because when I'm on the road, I can see a Pam truck turned over, a U.S. Express truck turned over, M Milan, like Hogan, like everybody had accidents, but it's like Swift is that main target. They the biggest company out. They got to be doing something right. So, like, you know what I'm saying? My experience with Swift, I ain't gonna lie. As a company driver, I made more money with Swift than any other company that I was with as a company driver, well, and that's that's real. Okay. See, there's like I said, it's just that it's just that it's not the company. It's not the company. It's it's the drivers that makes the company look bad, and it's just unfortunate. Right. It's just unfortunate that Swift had so many bad drivers that's now that just they're like the joke of the industry now but on a real there are some good legit drivers at swift i mean a friend of mine finished out his uh finished out his training at swift so so yeah man swift uh swift i don't have no problems with swift i mean you know i personally you know me at the time i didn't want to go i didn't want to go to swift either because of all the all of the negative that the uh company was uh was bringing with uh with 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 their drivers and stuff like that so i i decided like i said i decided to go over to the to the net's worst thing <laughs> yeah, right you know, right 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 i went over to the net's worst thing all right man so before you even got into truck driving what what, what you was doing before before you got into trucks other than the schools you did mention the fact that you 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 you're a tattoo artist so you have a you have a website you yeah. have a you have a you have a site where your where your work is at with tattoos? Um, actually I got an Instagram with some of my work on it. Uh what's your Instagram? It's like Mark it's Marquise underscore Spell that about D O U No no spell M A R M A R Q U I S Q U I S Uh underscore underscore god. B O U T god damn Unders underscore what y'all y'all got the underscores and all like that man <laughs> give me give me one word but go ahead fin finish spelling it uh, it's underscore E O U T C you say C 
No, B as in ball. Oh, B. O O U T U T. Uh, Mar Marquise about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frank Nitty. But it's B A T instead of T H A T. All right, I'm I'm clicking on. I can't bring your account is private, but I I just went on here and sent you a, a request. Uh, you probably might be driving, so don't don't worry about accepting it and all like that. We'll I'll 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 bring it up in post and all like that. Right. Uh, so you a tattoo? So what? Uh, what, what? What? Where did you learn to uh tattoo? Uh, tattoo from? <laughs> yeah, when I when I was locked up. I learned a tattoo. <laughs> I was always drawing. Okay. So, uh, like, a lot of the dudes, you know, they was like, yeah, hey, bro, like, you could draw me the tattoo real quick. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I spot you for the week type, you know. So, you know what I'm saying? You get food off of it. You get the soap. You get the tissue. You get the toothpaste. All the extras, you know, socks, shirt, whatever. So, it was like I was drawing people tattoos. You know, then uh, one of the artists came to me. He was like, bro, like, what you drawing? You need to try to put it on skin. So he made me a tattoo machine out of a uh MP3 uh MP3 player battery. I don't know how he did it. <laughs> it was crazy. Like he made me a full tattoo machine. And like people found out, word got around, I started tattooing people. And it was like that's the way I ate. Well you I realized like You know, in jail, in, in jail, in prison, people become MacGyvers. <laughs> <laughs> people become macgyvers yeah, yeah. when they when they go to jail because a lot of the stuff that you a lot of the stuff that we take for granted man trust me they 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 can take they they can make they they can make any and everything they can make a they compromise it's just like my man says right. in, in the sopranos compromise you got you gotta you you didn't have it he compromised. He did it that way. Right. So tattoo machine, right. and you started. You started tattooing, and and you pretty. You sound like you got good at it. Yeah, I got pretty good. You know, uh, over time or whatever like that. And you know, um, it was, it was the way to eat. You know what I'm saying? It's the easy grind too. Like it's like yeah, you never really perfect it, mm -hmm. but you know what I'm saying? It's always progress with the art. So, yeah, like that, that was just my passion, though. I like drawing. I like art in general. You know, like, I even want to open up a tattoo shop one day type well, you, and make that happen. Well, you know, uh, trucking to give you that opportunity to to, uh, to to make your dreams come true, man. That's that's why you're here. That's why you in it. So. Let's uh let's 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 get to the story, man. Well, let's get to the story of of what happened to you. Uh, you you was uh you was you was you what in Louisiana? What well, go ahead and tell the story of what happened. Hey, um, normally I don't drive at night. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I had maybe like seven hours to drive after I got loaded. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna kill six. So I'm coming out of Dallas, trying to get over to uh, Mississippi. So by the time I get to Mississippi, I probably got, you know, I still got like like an hour and a half left on my clock tight. But before I even get there, um, I was just, really, you know what I'm saying, just riding. And then like a car with his hazard on in front of me. So I was like, bet, let me get over. Like, you know what I'm saying, probably can't go no faster or something like that. It's like, bet, let me get over. <clears throat> So I got over. So we riding, riding. At this point, I'm by myself. Like, I don't see nobody else. You know what I'm saying? It's a little distance between me and that car. So as I'm speeding up, like, not really speeding up, but as I'm going up this hill, like, you know what I'm saying? It's a bridge between Louisiana and Mississippi. Right. So I'm going up the bridge about to cross over into Mississippi. So uh, I slow down, like, while I'm going up the hill because you can't see over it. So I started slowing down. Then when I got to the top, I see headlights at the bottom. But mind you, I got 44,350 pounds behind me. So at this point, but it's like the truck really didn't, these trucks ain't going to stop like right away. So slam on the brakes, 
slowed down a little bit, but then I start dropping the heel. So at this point, I'm slamming like, at this point, I'm holding it. I'm holding my brakes like to slow it down. So as I look at my rearview mirror to make sure ain't nobody behind me, because at this point, I'm about to pop my brakes because it's somebody in front of me. I need to stop my truck immediately. So I start rolling down the hill, still stab my brakes, whatever like that. My brakes start smoking. So I'm like, dang, like, you know what I'm saying? Let me get in the right lane. So that this time I'm riding in the left lane. So the car is at the bottom of the hill face towards me. So I'm like, yo, like my exact expression was like, you know, yo, what the F? Yo, like, what the F is going on? So I go ahead and switch over to the right lane. I'm still trying to slow my truck down because I don't know what this car going to do. Where's the car at? So I'm almost to it. It's in the middle of the highway. It's moving. Like, it's real slow. It's moving. I can tell it's moving. So is, is, and, is the uh, car coming towards you or you or the car is 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 away from you? It's coming towards me. Oh, my God. Like, it's coming towards me. Like, it's at the bottom of the hill. I'm going down. And I can see it moving, but it's moving slow. So I'm like, this is killing my stopping distance. So yeah, if I'm already in the left lane, I hop over in the right lane. Okay. And I'm still setting my brakes. So I'm like, if this car just decided to jump over here, I'm going like, to smash it. Okay. So I'm still burning the brakes. At this time, we got cameras in our truck. So the camera is like recording the whole thing that's going on. So I'm sliding down the hill. They say, you know, like I'm getting close. I say about 10 yards. I pull my trailer brake. They say you're supposed to do that because you're a jackknife. Right. But I'm still on a on a bridge, walled up under the bridge. If I run into the wall, I'm going to eventually go over because of the weight that I am. <sighs> so I pull, the, uh, I pull my trailer brake. I'm still sliding. I'm still on the brake. Then I get about five yards away. Like, my truck is still at, like, 25. And I'm, st- I'm looking at it, like, trying to slow it down, looking at my speed, looking at the car. I'm like, bro, you know what? Like, I don't even know what to do at this point. Like, I ain't going to lie. Like, I, I got teary eyes. I'm like, either I'm going to die, this person going to die, we both going to, something going to happen. So, like, yeah, about five yards away, I just closed my eyes. Like, like, bro, like, yeah, that's it. And I don't know, like, the car just, like, the, the truck stopped. It was like, I know it wasn't even enough space, enough room. I don't use my brakes to death. Like, it ain't no way that this truck, at this point, the brakes is useless. The truck just stopped. Then I opened my eyes up. The car was turned sideways in front of me, as if they turned to the side to back up and go back in the other direction. So I'm like, you got to be serious. Like, this can't even be right. Did you? Like, cause I'm feeling. Did you? Did you? Did you take? Did you take after the after the situation? Did you? Did you take pictures or anything? No, no, I couldn't. Cause see, what happened was when I when I by the time the truck stopped, I opened my eyes. I'm like, I don't hear nothing. I ain't running to nothing. You know, I opened my eyes up. The lady is in front of me in like a orange Ford Fusion, four focus hatchback type. She looked like an old lady, and it looked like she was lost. So when I popped my brakes, I was going to get out and help her. Like, where you trying to go? What are you trying to do? Like, well, you know, what's the problem? If I knew if that was my grandma, I'd be like, you know what I'm saying, somebody help her, you know. But by the time I popped my brakes, she bagged up, and she sped up. So I'm like, where's she going? But then now I see like a 379 coming over. I see the car that had the hazards on coming over, and it's a truck behind him. So I'm like, oh, yeah, like. I avoided this whole situation, but this truck coming too fast, and he don't even know what's going on. And we all know when them 379 peeps running, they running. And really, it was just like she backed up. I think she saw the other truck, and she just pulled off, like, real fast. Like, I couldn't even get out of the truck. So I just pushed my brakes in, and I was still, like, on a decline, uh, rolling. I took off. Like, it wasn't nothing much I can do. I was shook. I'm speechless, man. I mean, she, she did. She she didn't realize what she what, what what she almost did. By the sounds of it, right. 
she didn't right. she didn't realize what 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 she could have what she could have caused. Do you think she was like? Right. Do you think it could have been a like a like a medical situation that 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 she that she was driving in the in the wrong lane? That's possible because she was an old lady. It was like maybe it's medical. Maybe she was on like some medications or something, or maybe like she thought you could get on the highway that way and she don't know the area. So it was like I really didn't even. I could just tell she was scared. And she was lost. Like she was scared or lost. It was like one or the other. So she didn't get out of the she so didn't like, get out of the car at all. She just just all. pulled just 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 start up the car and just started driving. Yeah, yeah, it just pulled off like nothing happened. Wow, man, look, I'm I'm gonna man, look, Jesus took the wheel. That that's all I can say for you, bro. Jesus was there, yeah. and if Jesus was there and he took the wheel. Believe me, that's that's almost like what happened to me. It wasn't it, it wasn't in the truck, but you know, it's a similar situation that I was in and uh didn't know what to do, how to get out of it and just thought just thought the worst. Just just close just close your eyes and accept what was coming. You know, right, you, you, right. you open your eyes and you're all over to the side. Safe. Didn't cause no contract catastrophe. That's all Jesus. That's that's all faith, man. That's that's right, all. Right. That's that's all faith, man. Salute to you. I did like my company. Nah, they appreciate that, man. Like, I, it ain't even me. <laughs> I can't say it was me. Like, oh, yeah, I'm dead skilled over driving while I was able to stop. No, no, no that, that wasn't even. When these people, they said, I, I'm getting calls from safety in different terminals, vice president. They trying to figure out what happened. And how. And, <laughs> and how did this truck stop? Like, they like, we saw the video. We saw how fast she was going. We saw he slowing down. We getting, you know what I'm saying, break messages and uh sensors Hi, and stuff wait. like that. Oh, go ahead. How you stop? Like they, they, that's what they're trying to figure out. Like we saw you did everything you were supposed to do as a driver, but how you stop that truck? Hi, that's way. It, that's that's that houseway. That's that that that's how I'm thinking. Right. Like how? How did you? How did you? How did you do it, man? How did you do it? And the only way, the only way that I can come up with again is is Jesus, man. Your faith. Hey. The Lord just just hey. came down, just came down and just said, yo, bro, it ain't your time yet. It ain't your time, and it ain't that old woman's time either. She she got right, she right. she got lucky as well, man. She got lucky as well. It it, it wasn't it right. wasn't your time yet. But uh, and like they was telling me like when they called, it was like, like to be honest, we can't even explain just looking at the video. Like they was asking me like, did you hit something? We need pictures. Like it looked like you ran in, like you hit her. It looked like you ran into the guardrail. You hit something. I'm like, no, man, I didn't hit nothing. I was just that close to it. That lady clearly in the video backed up, turned around, and went about the way. She didn't even she she didn't even get out to acknowledge anything. Didn't didn't even get out to acknowledge that it was a big ass truck on the side of her car that could have that could have it that could have annihilated her. She didn't do that. <clears throat> she didn't get out and oh. and 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 wow, I'm speechless, bro. They like they were saying like you know, it was like let it be any other driver. Yeah, any other driver that would have been, been it would have been it it, it would have been fatal. Would have been fatal for all all parties involved, man. Luckily, luckily for you, you know. Luckily for you, the hand of God came down. And 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 place it upon you to not 
to 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 not go yet, man. To not go. Like I said, he he said it wasn't y'all time yet. You know, you got a wife, you got kids. Wasn't wasn't time for you to go yet, man. So <clears throat> definitely salute to you hey. for for avoiding all of that situation, man. Wow. Hey, sir. Salute to you, man. Who um who are you driving for? If you you want to say who you driving, you still driving for Swift or who you driving for now? No, I'm with US Express right now. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, US, US Express. God damn it, man. <laughs> well, I bet not talk. Yeah, I bet man. I bet not talk bad about US Express now, man, because this right <laughs> here. This guy right here, he he did the damn thing to avoid a catastrophe, and like I said again, shout out to you, man. Who was uh other than your grandfather, man? Who else was influence, uh, influenced you to get into trucking? Uh, nobody. Like it was nobody. Uh, really influenced me as far as uh driving a truck. But you know, like on oh, um me, I would at least thought that I was gonna join the I about to say like uh this ambulance ride behind me. I don't know what she's trying to do, but Yeah, but I was really thinking a long time ago, like when I was young, I was like, Yeah, I wanna be a police officer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or whatever like that. And that was only because like my grandmama, everybody was part of the service. So it was like, that's all, like I was seeing. Oh, granddaddy put his uniform on, go to work. Mm -hmm. Grandpa, you uniform on, go to work. So I was like, yeah, hey, I want to be a, I want to be a police officer. You know what I'm saying? Or I want to be like, I used to watch the TV shows when like, they got like the big dudes kicking at people, those looking for murders and stuff like that. Okay, okay. I want to be like that. So I was like, yeah, hey, like, you know, you murder somebody, <clears throat> I'm on you. But on the other side, my daddy said like, yeah, hey, my grandma had a, a legitimate but like my dad and my uncle, all that was in the street. Mm -hmm. So like I saw like where the legal side came from, and I saw where the street side came from. That would have so like, would, so would, would that would have cool. blurred everybody if if you would have went that route. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, a lot of a oh. lot of cats, you know, a lot of friends and all like that. You know, a lot of your street friends. I don't think they would have. I don't think they would have been too keen of you, you know, flipping on the flipping on the dark side. See, you know, like even when it came down to that, it's a lot of people that's in the street that's with the police too, and it's just like another way to get, you know, what you need around the system. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people be wondering, like, oh, how you been doing this all this time? You ain't never been caught inside working. So that was my mind. Like, oh, yeah, my uncle worked up. All right, cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? I see what he's doing, so I know I can do it. You know, like the money that came with it, it was just a price. You know what I'm saying? He had to pay after everything was said and done. But I was really leaning more towards, like, after I seen what everybody else was making, I was like, yeah, I want to be in the street. I want the cause. I want the money. Like, you know what I'm saying? You want the gun. And then, you know, you're hearing, like, your uncle get shot at. They've been shot. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I wouldn't mind it. You know what I'm saying? At that, at that point, I'm like, we already had the mentality already. You know what I'm saying? You get a shootout every day, like, you know, 10 years old, going to school with a gun. You know, I've been shot. So it was like, I wasn't really too much worried about it. All right, all right. So what's uh after this situation that uh that that happened with you with the uh with the truck and everything? Uh did you did you have to did you have to go in uh, you said safety called you but did you have to go in and see him face to face or they they Oh. Uh no, everybody just kind of like all you get called this morning. Uh from my head terminal they still trying to figure out, like, how you, how you stop the truck. This thing, man, they like, yeah, you took every precaution. It's being safe. We reward you. They did reward me in a way, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I appreciate it. I need that little extra. 
you know what I'm saying? But out of everybody, they never seen nothing like it. All right. Like it, when everybody look, watching this video, they call it asking, "Well, what happened?" Like I, I'm, I'm looking at the video, like we watching it, but we don't see. Well, how you stop that truck? Like, what did you do? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I burned my brakes out, pulled a trailer brake. They say you're supposed to do it. Somehow my trailer didn't jackknife. The truck just stopped. Wow. And they say, like, they like when they talk to me, they say, like, your truck was going 22 miles an hour and then down one, zero. Like, it just made a complete stop. Well, this this would be glad that he did make a complete stop, man. What keeps you after that? After that, after that scary situation, what what keeps you motivated to keep on trucking, man? I mean, something I got a little bored. Something like that would have would have would have clearly would have clearly had somebody to say, "Yo, I'm I'm not with this no more. I'm I'm hanging up the keys." What makes you? No, like I I did. Like, I did. Like, you know what I'm saying? I called my mom. I, I called it like, hey, I'm done. I can't even drive no more. And then it was just like, no, you did what you had to do. Like, my mama, she's spiritual. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hey, go ahead. I pray of you every morning. You pray every morning before you even get in the driver. Exactly. I, did, I, well, you know I do saying? that. God just showing you that he's still here. I do that. Hey. I do that every day, every day. When I get when I when I go to sleep, I talk to him, and when I get up in the morning, I talk to him, and when I get behind this seat, this wheel, I, I make sure that 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 I that I bow my head for a couple of seconds before I get up and go. You know, you you got right, right. you, you got to put him in the midst of everything that you do, man, because if you don't. You know, bad bad things happen. They they say that he's never he he's never there when you want him, but he's there when you need him. And he he was right. He was there when when you needed him that time, man. So 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 hey. you say uh so it was your moms that uh that pretty much told you to go ahead and and stick with it, stick with driving. No, it was she said if that's how I felt. I need to go ahead and come off the road because she'd rather me be alive than dead because of a truck. But at the same time, it was like, when I hung up the phone with her, I just started thinking about it because, like, I got so much going on. Like, I'm trying to franchise businesses. I'm trying to have my own trucking company. One day, I'll just have a couple trucks that, you know what I'm saying, I got a little part. So if y'all want to, you know what I'm saying, drive a truck, you got the opportunity, you know, to be 18 years old hop in a truck, make your own money, learn how to stand on your own two feet. That's just all of I got to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's no longer about me. If I get out of the truck, I go back to tech point. God knows what else I'm going to go back to doing. Right. So it was like, really, my boss motivated me. Like, hey, they need daddy. Like, they always see daddy in a big truck. They always see that when I come home, oh, daddy, you got the big truck? Yeah, it's both outside. So, like, you know what I'm saying? I just can't see myself getting out of no truck. And knowing that I got to create a future for my little boy. How old are your kids, man? Uh, I got a two year old and I got a one year old. Oh, okay, you just oh man, and that's that's kind of hard for you being on the road, man. The the family life, your your wife is holding it down. How how she feels about you being gone for you know time uh a time or two. Um. It's mixed emotions. Like, she understand I got to be out. So as long as she get to talk to me, FaceTime me, whatever like that, she be cool. But then again, at the same time, she be like, I'm lonely. Like, sometimes just be like the lonely moment. Oh, yeah, I need you here right now. You know, I want you around. Like, it feel like I ain't felt your presence. It's like, yeah, I understand it. Because I be in the truck, I'm lonely. You know what I'm saying? But I got to take care of home. You know what I'm saying? So. It ain't really, you know, if you don't own a truck, it's not like you could go get a local job. In Atlanta, it's expensive living. Right. So it's not like I could go get a local job, pay everything, be comfortable, treat home, date, 
you know what I'm saying, holidays come up, I want to make sure my, my kids got what they want. It's just, I'm doing this. This one is temporary. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I'm leasing a truck with them. It's a two-year lease. So I'm like, all right, cool. You see, you can pay it off early. So I be running hard. I stay out a week, two weeks at a time. Go home for about two days, whatever like that. Hop back out, run again. Like, I try to balance it, but which you really can't balance it. So, you know what I'm saying? Like I told her, like, you got to give me a little time. When the truck paid off, I'll go back local. You need, the you need that support. That that support is important while while dealing with a while having a family. <clears throat> you gotta excuse me. I feel like I got something in my chest. Um, you need that support when 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 you have a family, especially a young family like yours. You know, you you know sometimes right. sometimes the, the 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 female, the wife, the girlfriend could feel some kind of way, but you know. Hopefully she understands what you're doing for the future. You see what I'm saying? And right, a lot right. of females don't even don't don't even can't even see it. Well, you're not here with me and yada 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 and this, that, and the third, and you know, and I'm like, look, man, I I I got this house to take care. I got I got this family to take care. I got the kids. And, you know, so as long as you got that support, that support is key. It's definitely key, man. Well, all right, man. Well, I already brought up where the people can get in connection with you. Let's see. Let me see if I uh, got it right here. I brought up your uh, YouTube page, The Nitty Trucker Chronicles. Where you come up with that name, bro? Um, my street name is Frank Nitty. Frank Nitty. <laughs> uh, yeah, like you know, my daddy was Big Nitty, so me coming up as his son, it was like, oh yeah, they go little Frank Nitty right there. Okay, okay. And then it was, it was kind of like two arm. It was kind of like yeah, like some people would be like, oh, that's Frank Lucas, which I don't really want to take after that. But I normally. You know what I'm saying? I'm going off of Frank Nitty. Okay, that's so. what's up. That's what's up. The Nitty Trucker Chronicles. So if you guys want to wanna hook up with him, man, definitely go to his YouTube page and subscribe to him. Uh, he also has a, let's see. Yeah, I still got your Insta- Instagram. Yeah, I still Marcus got your Instagram up. Marcus about that. Make sure you guys send him a request and he'll hit you up. Yo, uh frank man thank you very much for coming on man i really do appreciate it inspiring inspiring um uh trucker story man uh i am truly thankful that that you're here to tell it and i am thankful that you came on my platform to tell it to our listeners man i really do uh appreciate that salute to you bro that's what's up that's what's up well guys that is it that is it my man frank nitty (laughs) my man frank (laughs) nitty in the house let me give it up for him one time right quick wrong button that's that's the bruh button that's the bruh button we we need this one there we go (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah that was the bruh button nah we need the, the round of applause for my man frank nitty for what he did man i mean i i don't think no other trucker could have did what he had done in that situation and like i said with the grace of god the hand of god that came down and literally took the will for this man so like I said, man, Frank, man, thank you for coming on, sharing your story with me, sharing your little bit of your life, man. And yo, you, you, you part of the LOM community, man. That's what's up. <laughs> part of the LOM community. Don't be no stranger, bro. If you want to come on and and chop it up with me again, you are most definitely welcome, man. You are most definitely welcome. And uh, before. Oh, yeah, yeah. Before I say anything else, let me shout out to uh, DeMarcio O'Brien for bringing us together, young Greasy. <clears throat> like I said, I got something in my chest, so excuse me, y'all. Uh, let me give it up to my man, young Greasy. Oh, hold on. Is somebody calling me? Yeah, we got to, yeah, we can't, can't, 
talk right now. Can't talk right now. Um, I think I'm going to go and uh, give me something. What do you guys suggest for, like, I feel like it's, like, congested. <clears throat> I feel like it's something stuck in my chest. So I'll go and figure that out as soon as I get up out of here. But we about to get up out of here. If you guys want to come on the show, definitely hit me up at LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. Hit me up in the Instagram at LockoutMen. Let me know what you guys want. If you want to come on and chop it up with me, be a co-host or anything like that, let me know. If you guys know anybody with some inspirational stories like my man Frank here, definitely send them my way and I'll reach out to them and I'll get them on the, on the podcast. Frank, man, you take it easy. We about to get on up out of here. And uh, and you continue continue success to you, man. Uh, blessings to your family, and be safe out there, man. Whoa, I think he hung up. All right, well, that's it. We're done. We're out. Peace. <clears throat> God damn it, man.